So we looked at liquid solutions and, and particularly gases dissolved in liquid solutions and then we said that the amount or the, or the concentration of a gas that uh, is dissolved in a particular solvent is going to be dependent on the, the partial pressure of that particular gas um, above the, the liquid surface or the, the solution surface. So, so we also know that liquid solutions are not just gases dissolved in liquids but they can also be solid solutes dissolved in liquids or, or even liquid dissolved in liquid. So, so we're going to look at one important property of liquid solutions that is the vapor pressure. So, so we know that a liquid in its pure form is going to have a certain vapor pressure, certain equilibrium vapor pressure at any given temperature. So if you change the temperature then that equilibrium vapor pressure also changes. So, so if you take a solution instead, let's say instead of um, just water, if you actually add salt or sugar to the water, if you add a non-volatile solute to, to that liquid, then it turns out, we'll see how that that solution has a lower equilibrium vapor pressure compared to the solvent in its pure form. So, so the, to sort of understand this intuitively, so if you look at this um, schematic here, so this is just, let's say this is just a closed container with some water in it and it's pure water. And we know that uh, whatever water molecules go into the vapor phase are going to come from the surface of this liquid. So, you know, this, this surface molecules, surface water molecules here have a certain kinetic energy distribution. We already know that there are some molecules that have very low kinetic energy at a given point of time and they cannot make it to the vapor state. They're just going to stick with their liquid state and then there are some that are that have really high kinetic energy and all others are somewhere in between so so let's say they some of them here have high enough kinetic energy that they can actually go into the vapor phase so then you have a bunch of these uh, water molecules in vapor state so there is a rate associated with this. There is a certain number of molecules per unit time that escape from the liquid phase into the vapor phase. So and then at, so at the same time, there is a rate associated with some of these water molecules in the vapor state. If they have high enough kinetic energy, they're going to collide back with the liquid surface and enter into the uh, into the liquid phase. So some of these are going going back into the liquid phase, and this is happening all the time. The you know water molecules getting into the vapor state and water molecules is going back into the liquid phase. So, so there, there comes a time where there is a dynamic equilibrium established when these two rates are equal and based on the number of water molecules in the um, vapor phase you can actually determine an equilibrium vapor pressure at that temperature. So, so, so this is what we know about a pure um, solvent vapor pressure. So now if you, so, so instead of just water, if you actually let's say had sugar dissolved in water or salt dissolved in water, let's say these, these uh, molecules in pink here are sugar molecules these sugar molecules are, are what we call non-volatile solute, meaning they are uh, their own vapor pressure is going to be close to zero, meaning the number of sugar molecules that actually can escape from the solid state and, you know, that can go into the vapor state is going to be so small that you can, for all practical purposes, you can consider that vapor pressure coming from sugar um, to be close to zero. So that means whatever vapor pressure um, is generated because of the solution in this closed container at a particular temperature is going to be because of these solvent molecules. In this case, it's the water molecules. So what you'll immediately see is at the surface, the, um, the number of water molecules per unit area, their population has come down because now they're competing for the space with these sugar molecules. So, so because the number of water molecules per unit area has come down, the rate at which these water molecules escape into the vapor state is all, also is going to come down. So, so these guys, let's say there's some, some of these that have high enough kinetic energy. So these, these are going to go up into the vapor state. But remember the rate at which these are going into the vapor state is smaller than in case of pure solvent. But, but an important point to note here is that the rate at which these guys actually come back into the liquid state is going to be the same in this case versus in this case because there is nothing stopping them from coming uh, from the vapor state to the liquid state. So this is before the equilibrium is established, let's see. So, so then this whole dynamic equilibrium shifts so that the equilibrium vapor pressure that finally gets established is, is lower in this case versus in this case. 
So the takeaway here is that since the, the fraction of the surface that is covered by the solvent molecules is, has reduced in case of a solution compared to the solvent, the number of water molecules getting into the vapor phase per unit time has gone down, but the number of water molecules coming back into the liquid phase from the vapor phase is, is sort of the same um, compared to what it used to be in the case of pure solvent. So as a result, the net effect is that the, the dynamic equilibrium is shifted to a point where the, the resultant vapor pressure here is smaller than in, in this case, reduced equilibrium vapor pressure compared to pure solvent. So what we'll see in the next video is, is how to quantify this, this reduction in the vapor pressure once a solute is dissolved in a, in a solvent.